let me grab some probes and I'll be back. Okay, here's a JFET. We'll test this first. As you see, it's testing good. Three is the gate. So let me show you this one here. Okay, here we are testing this. This is a 2N5457 and uh, that's a sample pattern that you get. We'll test the other one, the other side of it right here. And so now we're connecting pins 1 and 3 before it was pins 2 and 3. So as you see you get a similar one. Now when you connect 1 and 2 Okay, connecting one and two, you'll see kind of an odd looking pattern on there, but you still do have the, the step pattern as you see. Now let me show you a bad JFET, which actually I was sorting through these the other day and it turns out that I have one new one that's bad. Okay, to show you this one here, this one simply tests as two diodes and this is the same model of JFET if you connect the source and the drain here you could see it's basically shorted you're getting a straight line and that's what you would see if you simply connected these two uh, test leads together and that's what's defective on this so you could have used this instead of a device like this to spot this defect. Okay, this is a standard 1N model 407 diode. This is typical L shape. Okay, here's this typical driver tra uh, transistor. It's an MJE 15031. We'll connect that up. Okay, there it is, connected to pins 1 and 2. There's pins uh, 2 and 3. And pins 1 and 3. And in case you're curious, this is a 42 volt uh, supply that's feeding this. So it is a higher voltage than a lot of curve tracers. Now, I have another unit that is a good old-fashioned uh, octopus, and it has a switchable 5 volt and 50 volt, but this one is 42. Now, I'm wondering whether you might have to be a little bit cautious on testing like small signal preamp transistors, possibly. I think a quick test probably wouldn't hurt them. In my experiments with it, I haven't seen a problem, but you know whether it's degrading I suppose I would personally not have any other way of knowing other than looking at the the curve itself which usually when these things are defective you will see a slant someplace or other type of distortion you won't see the clean breaks like this either horizontal or vertical you'll see ones that shoot off at angles and that tends to show that you have internal breakdown Okay, you can test capacitors, at least uh, lower value capacitors on here. And 4 microfarad would be within the range that you can test. And as you see, all you do is tilt, tilt the line a little bit. And this is totally wrong behavior for a capacitor. And this is another way you could have spotted this defective in circuit. Obviously power off and capacitor discharged. And as you'll see, that is a completely uh, bogus reading. It's a very bad capacitor. We'll check a few of these other ones. Okay, here's the other dry electrolytic. And as you'll see, it has a little bit of an oval pattern. And uh, this is, you should see an oval pattern, but you can see that this one is obviously bad. Let me go ahead and get a good 4 microfarad as a comparison and I'll show you that okay this is a brand new I believe it's a I want to say it's a Panasonic or a Nichicon I forget which 
but this is a 4.7 and as you see you get a pretty nice circle there and that's what a 4.7 is going to look like on here so you could see how bad those other two capacitors were one was dead as a doornail the other one was virtually dead let's try that other can electrolytic that looked like it was completely open and see what it does okay here's one section of this can as you see it's dead as a doornail let's try the other section again completely dead this section completely dead and that section completely dead this is the worst capacitor that I've seen for a while I mean it's just completely open okay this is a 5 volt Zener diode it's an example of testing that This is an example of a curved trace of a shot key diode. Here is an amber LED, which as you see the LED is lighting up also. And this is a 1000 ohm resistor. As you see it just becomes a slanted line. You can only test resistance to a limited degree on an octopus. Okay, this is a 10,000 ohm resistor. And as you see, we're starting to approach horizontal again. And once you get to horizontal, you can no longer read resistance because to the octopus, it just tests open. Here's a 22,000 ohm resistor and we're even closer to being horizontal so we're starting to reach the end of where this will test